Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting, Monday, November 6, 2017, at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier? Mr. Mayor, Mayor Lowry? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Lindsay? Here. Mr. Lighty? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Lethley? Here. Mr. Kraybacher? Here. All present. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll stand on tonight's invocation by Councilman Ethan Reynolds. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for allowing us to gather in this freest country in the world. Lord, we ask for your blessings on the city council in this city. Father God, also please uh, comfort those individuals who have lost family members or know someone that had been lost in the incident in Texas. Just yesterday, Father God, guide us into the best decisions possible for the city. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. And pledge we the flag in the back tonight. <laughs> pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Actions on the minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting of October 16th, 2017. So moved. Second. Council, any questions or discussion did on I, minutes? Did I have a second from Mr. Lindsay? Yes. 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 No discussion, sir? Uh, before yet, before there's an actual vote, I just wanted to add on the last ordinance we, ordinance we passed, ordinance 17-39E, I, I made an amendment to the to my minutes to go into the journal that under abstain I, I listed the reason why Mr. Leslie abstained, oh, and that's not in your minutes. Oh, sir. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Minutes past seven to zero. Thank you, sir. All right, dropping down to communications tonight. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, we have Miss Linda Eggleston as to some updates on the community garden. I need to go. Yeah, if you could mind to go to the podium, please. Do you need her address or anything, Mr. Collier? Yeah, she can give it when she. Linda, can I get your address? 317 South Main Street. Thank you. I return to you two years after I came to you and you gave us a piece of land that we could use for a community garden, and I thought you would like to know how we progressed in that two years. Um, in the first year, I was able to obtain a $2,000 grant over two years from a domestic hunger grant from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America through Lutheran Saints in Ministry, which is a coalition of four Lutheran churches in the area. John Kraybacher, our illustrious vice mayor, uh, was also able to obtain a grant uh, this last year through the National Church of the Brethren and their Glo Global Food Initiative. Um, these grants have allowed us to purchase a small storage shed, fencing, box most of the raised beds in the gardens, and pay for some labor for different projects. Uh, we have also received generous gifts from the community. We received a donation from the Western Clark County Business Coalition to purchase eight carboys to hold 250 gallons of water each, um, which have been generously and wonderfully filled by the fire department whenever we ran out of water. Um, to be able to use those carboys with garden hoses over the two years that we've been, two summers we've had, uh, we were able to do that with gifts of four majorly expensive couplings from RE Skilling Supplies. 
Studebaker Nursery supplied us with 10 dump truck loads full of topsoil. Um, and the dump professional property maintenance this year supplied us with two additional truck loads of topsoil and a dump truck load full of mulch for a huge discount. Uh, Scarf's Nursery gave us fence posts. Meadowview Gart Growers has supplied us with seedlings and seeds. Bruce Eggleston Signs supplied us with two signs for the gardens. We've gotten tremendous support from the Ohio State University Agricultural Extension with advice, personnel to teach classes, and seeds and ground ready starter plants. One member of the community who wishes to remain anonymous works for Spring Hill Nursery and supplied us with what I am estimated to be about $2,000 worth of plants that Spring Hill could not sell because of lost product codes. Most of these plants were perennials, blueberry bushes, grapes, raspberries, cherry bushes, asparagus, and strawberries. Two other families donated a blackberry tree and, and a cherry tree. The garden recently received a donation of a gasoline-powered weed whacker from a citizen in this town. Ren Haven, uh, a lawn maintenance company from Enon, has generously plowed the one area that we use for traditional gardening. In this time, we have sponsored classes led by Ohio State University in nutrition, seed saving, water can hot water canning, pressure canning, freezing, and dehydration. We have regularly attended the farmer's market. The first year, we signed up primarily to increase the visibility of the garden. At the market, we supplied recipes for more unknown vegetables and herbs. We've also uh, sold extra produce from the garden at the market, accepting donations. The donations have been used to maintain the garden and build a reserve for future development. We're working on compiling these recipes and more into a new Carlisle Community Garden cookbook to sell for the, at the farmer's market next year to provide continued support for the garden, assuming that we can't get grants every year to pick up the costs. Through the work that we've done in the garden, John Kraybacher was appointed to the Food Access Committee of the newly formed Clark County Local Food Council, and I was appointed to the Education Committee. We've been informed that the New Carlisle Community Garden is considered one of the top three community gardens in Clark County, after only two years. Um, we have, are in the process of applying for some interns from Wittenberg University for the spring of 2018 to gather information we, be, we believe will help us to improve the garden participation and help us to develop a program to teach children from the Tecumseh School District about gardening and where their food comes from. I believe that the garden has had a positive impact on our community. To end, I would ask the council to consider if there might be a possibility of expand, expanding the garden in the coming year. I leave that for your consideration, not discussion. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this project. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Excellent. Um, just out of curiosity, I've always wondered, do you guys have much trouble back there with any vandalism? Is it ever an issue, really? I haven't, I haven't heard that anything of any size. Only with four-legged. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Four-legged vandalism is very rampant. Um, deer or rabbit? And eight there is a deer, six there's, and there's eight a buck. <laughs> Sometimes eight-legged ones. Yeah, there is a deer back there. There is a, a buck that is getting kind of fat. <laughs> And awesome. so, and there's also um, somebody trapped some raccoons back there. 
and now they're now they're living happily in Tip City. So <laughs> until they decide. Move. Until they decide. <laughs> Also, I don't know if, um, if Mr. Reynolds or Mr. Lighty might be able to answer this, and I'm, you were touching on also with Tecumseh, is, is that something, if it got big enough, if it, if it did expand, if it needed to expand, it, would FFA, is there something there that FFA would want to? I was not a future farmer. Okay, I didn't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> to answer your question, we have contacted FFA several times, and um, Paula Crew has also tried to help us with FFA. And it seemed like that FFA is only interested in four-legged things, okay. you know, animals. Mm -hmm. And um, because this is an ongoing thing, once you start, you know, you just don't stop. You know, you have to go all through the summer mm -hmm. with it. Okay. Next year, one of our plans for next year is uh, we talked to Paula, and we're developing a class uh, for those for summertime. Um, they they get grant money for. Hispanic summer uh, uh, schedule. And they um, get about 40 to 50 children. And uh, we talked to her earlier, and she would like to have some kind of something by January. And that's the idea of the interns, is to help us to develop okay. you know, that class. Thing. OK, great. Well, thank you, Linda. Council, any other comments, questions? Good job. No, yeah. yes, thanks for coming tonight. and. Mr. Krabach, that would be awesome if that actually uh, follows through. Well, we have a plan for a, a greenhouse back there. That's why we're asking for some more property. There is also grant money to put up an uh, orchard, you know, that they will give us 20 trees. Was it about 20 trees? No, they'll come in and put in an orchard for us. We need to have some people who will help in installing it, but they'll bring the trees, the equipment, everything else. But for that, we need to have a perennial lease on the land or ownership of it. Okay. So, so that I, I have at least been investigating the, the stretch of land on the east side of Clay there that uh, the we made the foundation of. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, moving on. Communication City Manager's report. Mr. Bridge, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of public. I'd like uh, to share with you the City Manager's report. Um, under action report, we have the please vote no on issue four, given tomorrow is election day. And moving under informational items, Board of Zoning Appeals meeting, there's one set for Thursday, November 16th. That is to re review, discuss, and vote on a variance for a setback for a business expansion in town. Updates on our city parks. Um, I have uh, secured additional grant money to bring baby swings to uh, Smith Park and also Willowick Park. Uh, the install date, unfortunately, is going to be November 28th, but that's just how it kind of worked out. Um, we will also be adding new mulch to not only Smith and Willowick Parks, but also Carlisle Parks as well. Um, so that's always a good thing when we got grant money to buy playground equipment similar to how we secured the playground equipment that's out there now. Uh, issue four, city-led updates. Uh, not much attendance at the city's walk-in sessions and town hall meetings. Uh, I did write a letter to the editor. Thank you so much, New Carlisle News, for publishing that. We do appreciate that. That letter to the editor is attached to the city manager's report. And again, save our city, vote no on issue four. Fab Metals will be seeking a property and tax abatement for the new addition, similar to RD Holder, uh, similar to the RD Holder agreement, excuse me. And then more information will be coming to council in regards to that. Upcoming, city health insurance. We may need a special meeting to discuss and approve city health insurance for our employees. Uh, quotes are coming in, but they're rather slow, but that is also very typical. Um, and the last thing on here is upcoming as well. We have gov deals. Uh, we are working on uh, legislation to get rid of unneeded city property that needs to be auctioned off. Uh, anticipated ordinance to council would be November 20th, so that's next council meeting. That is all I have for the city manager's report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, sir. Mr. Reynolds. With the city's property, is that going to be the possibly the old cruisers down at the water? It's a, yeah, it's a mixture of big, uh, vehicles, some old mowers and stuff like that. I was just driving past it the other day and looked down. It's like, oh. The graveyard. I, I mean, to me, it makes it look like they have a lot more police than we actually do. I was like, oh, look at all these cop cars. But still, I knew they weren't on. Sure. So, yeah. A lot of challenges right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Um, 
Are you allowed to say who the business is that's expanding? Yeah, it's Fab Metals. It's Fab Metals. Oh, is it for the first one? Same one? Okay. Yep. Right. They already went through the BZA once, but their architect oh, okay. slash engineer had miscalculated the lot dimensions. Oh, okay. So we have to go back in, put them in through the BZA, so the BZA can rule on the real lot dimensions. Okay. All right. um, the other thing is the grant that you're getting, is that from the health department? It is. It's the, uh, creating healthy communities. The same grant structure we went after when we, when we got the big equipment out there. Yeah, I was talking to them. That, that's why. I told them before. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great ally to have. You know, um, Clark County's done a good job at giving us a li liaison, and it, quite frankly, has worked out for us in our favor. Mr. Craybock and Mr. Lauer. Thank you. I have two. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I have three, but I'll save one for new business. Uh, I had a gentleman contact me this morning. Had a question, and I'm going to ask you. I was hoping how he would be here, but he's not. Sure. Because I told him I'd get an answer. Smith Street mm -hmm. in Washington tells me they've been patched over patches, needs to be dug up from the bottom, and completely be replaced. Is that anywhere in the future? Uh, we can look into that. I will give you a call tomorrow. That's Smith and Washington. Smith and Washington. Right. And it's been, it's a pothole that's an issue, or is it a whole he section said it's over? patches over patches. Dirt it's, patches? Yeah. He said, okay. it's, he said it's just unbearable. Claims it needs the blacktop dug up and completely redone. Okay, I'll have Howie look into that. We'll get, get an answer to you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. One more. Sure. Food trucks. Mm -hmm. Why are they only allowed eight months a year? That's how our ordinances read. Yeah. And I, I have no answer to that. That's just what, the, the what answer, our ordinances say. The answer to that is they're supposed to be temporary. They have, that's a good point. They are they're under temporary, temporary shelters. So if they're there 12 months a year, then that makes them permanent? Permanent. I thought the structure made them permanent, not time. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they, they have to be moved. They, they have to be moved. Okay, and I understand that, but what I'm saying is I thought structure determined whether, just like on your property, if I have a shed. Because it's a temporary structure, it's on wheels. So you right. can move it in and out. So that's what makes it a temporary structure. And I don't know why it's eight months. The per food permits issued by the county are good for a year. Um, the good thing about this is it's not in the charter. So if council wanted to change that legislation right. piece, all you guys have to do is vote on it. I think that would be a good idea. Um, so if one council member would like to introduce that legislation, you guys could do that. Okay. Since it's policy, I won't be introducing that. Um, it's a very simple procedure, though. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fuzzy. Mr. Bridge, uh, I asked uh, a few months ago about the red light flashing light on top of the water tower. Mm -hmm. It's not fixed yet. Any update on that? Yeah, it, it has something to do. Happen? Yep. Um, it will happen soon. It will happen soon. I don't have a solid date for you. Okay. Uh, and we discussed this offside is that there's an issue with the ladder that goes up to it. So that has to be fixed first before they can go ahead and fix the light. Getting the lights is not the issue. It's getting someone up there to solder, to weld, and make it OSHA okay for someone to get up there and actually change the light. So the ladder to go up to its mm -hmm. damage. Correct. Yep. What, uh, can you give us an idea of the actual condition of that tower? I'm sure it's fine other than the light. Uh, uh, and the ladder it goes up it. And the light, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. One more question. Yes, sir. Uh, on the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting, what is the setback now for uh, the expansions for the businesses? It depends on what zone you're in. So what zone are you asking about? What zone is this, this uh, Board of Zoning Appeals meeting going to be in? That would be light industrial. Okay. So it's 50 feet on one side, 25 feet with a total of 75. Okay. Thank yep. you. Sure. Excuse me. Excuse you. Bless you. Okay, well. <laughs> Bless you too. Bless you too. Thank you so much, Bobby. <laughs> um, feed that dog. Uh, That's funny. Did all the sirens go off today? Did I, did the, the one by the pool, did that go off? I can hear it from the station. Yeah, okay. On liars, but, oh, Facebook. Oh, uh, imagine that. There, there was some, yeah. somebody yeah. said that there was. Sure. They couldn't hear the siren. That's why. Mr. Lindsay, different sure. parts. Of, I didn't mean to cut you short. But different parts of the town have different oh, yeah, setbacks. I okay, know, gotcha. I didn't know what zone they were gotcha. in. So I guess I wasn't clear that I was referring sure. to the uh, zoning. Yeah. 
for the variance what zone that was in. Sure. What I, was in. what I meant to say, but that is the way it came out. No worries. I just wanted to make sure everyone's on the same page with that. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Good, Mr. Cobalt. That's it. Yes, go on. I want to follow up, John, about the sign. They may have all worked, but they certainly wasn't loud as they usually are. I thought they were worse every time. Uh, because I hear them every time, and I can hear them perfect. I had to really listen to a deer today. Mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe it was something in the atmosphere or something. I don't know because of all the storm last night, but they were definitely down. So. Well, I have a note. Usually the decibels don't change on that. They're usually set. Uh, maybe the one closest to you did not go off. We don't get a report Monday at 1 o'clock if they go on or off or not. Yeah, there was a big it. difference in it. Sure. I, I can tell them. I hear them every time they go off. And, okay. I, and I can usually hear them just kind of, you know, plain as day. And it, I really have to listen to hear them. Okay. Yep, we got some notes. No problem. Good, Mr. Lauder. I'm sorry? Good. Good. Thank you. I had a couple for you, Mr. Bridge. Uh, on, the, on the grant for the park equipment for the baby swings, what about, I thought we had talked about also looking into getting uh, equipment for uh, yeah. children with handicaps. Uh, we did, but unfortunately the amount of grant money that we had left and then how much the city can, tr can contribute to that is not where it needed to be. Okay. So we will look at that next year, okay. um, um, depending on how tomorrow plays out. Um, when you get to that expensive of equipment, a lot of times they want you to give some money of yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate when you want specialized equipment, the price seems to shoot up. But the long-term goal for, for our park is to have an inclusive playground equipment. So if someone has a child with disabilities, just because it's accessible doesn't mean it's accessible, handicap accessible. You may be able to get there, but you may not be able to partake in any kind of activity. So what I want to do is get a few pieces of playground equipment that allow someone who maybe is in a wheelchair get out of that wheelchair and get strapped into a piece of equipment to actually play with his, to play with his peers. So that's a goal of mine that we want to do, but it all depends on the financial health of the city and how much grant money we can get to do that. Thank you. What was the total, um, unless I missed it, did you make the total of grant you secured for these? Yeah, the baby swings, um, I, I think it was like under $5,000. It's about 5,000 for the baby swings and 5,000 for the mulch. Okay. The grant bought the baby swings and then we're buying the mulch. Great, right. mm -hmm. thank you. Mr. Reynolds. I clarify baby swings. It's a singular swing. It's not a set of swings. Uh, how it's going to work is at Willowick Park, it's going to have an addition onto that the current base. Okay. I think there's two, two actual baby swings yeah. on there. This one is more of like a T. Oh my God, this is a bad drawing. Nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody judge me. Oh, so basically, it's like that. Okay. Yeah. And what we're going to do. This is a double game of hangman. That's what it is. Uh, so, <laughs> I said don't judge by my drawing. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I can't draw. This one's actually, we're going to expand our current footprint we have here. So we'll have a six foot difference for ADA compliance from the edge of where we're at now. Six foot difference and then those baby swings are going to be there. All right. So someone, a parent could sit here and enjoy their other <coughs> kids playing on the bigger equipment while they're pushing their baby in the baby swings. All right. Yep. Just is wondering. Positive feedback. And man, if people don't know this, we did not have a single baby swing in this whole entire town. <clears throat> yeah, we used to. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Lighty. As someone with the baby and toddlers, hey, thanks for doing that. Um, You're welcome. Just because I'll probably be asked by my wife and the other people of the Parks and Rec group, yeah. what is the price difference that they want us to pay for the uh, handicapped equipment? I don't know that off the top of my head, so okay. I don't want to sit there and speculate on that. Um, we didn't go too much further with it. I think there's a lot, a little bit more work to be done, to be honest with you. Um, I don't want to even speculate. Okay. It was over $5,000, I'll give you Good that. Good boy. Because right. that's about what we had. Thank you, Mr. Lighty. Council, any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Bridge. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, moving on, comments from the members of the public. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address and try to keep it to close to five minutes if possible. Yeah. Hi, I'm Hi. Samantha Grable. I live at 103 Orth Drive. This is my service dog, Azora. Samantha, um, I'm sorry to cut you off. What was your last name again? Graybill. Get it, Jim. Could you spell that for me? G R A Y B I L L. Gray bill, color bill. 
Just uh, had to get it for the record. I apologize. 103. Orth. 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 Okay. And this is my service dog, Azora. <clears throat> I'm profoundly deaf. Okay. So when he sneezes, he doesn't sneeze at a level I can hear him. She amplifies and lets me know somebody made a noise. Oh. Okay. Hence, while I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't write a speech. I can swing it from the hip. But I did make notes. Okay. So the reason I'm here is basically my neighbors have cats <laughs> that they let roam. Okay. Now, even though my dog is a service dog, I still have to license her and I have to keep her on a leash. Okay. Or I have to provide her a fence. Okay. Yet my neighbor who has cats and lets them be outside can come sit on my front porch and bother my dog. Well, my dog has been trained when something comes on my property, she lets me know. Do we see the problem here? Okay. So I brought this up with my neighbor and they said, too bad. Actually, they shouted a lot of four letter words at me. Okay. And, and I said, can you put, I, when I carry my groceries in from the car, the cat has ran into my house. I've taken that, grabbed that cat up, went over, beat on their door, and said, threw their cat in their house, and said, keep your cat in your own house. I don't want it in mine. Their cat's constantly in my garage. Their answer to that is, don't over open your garage door. I said, keep your cat off my front porch furniture. Put your furniture away. You don't need porch furniture. Okay, which everybody sees this as a, a huge hassle. Now, when they moved into this house, they had one cat. Since they've moved in, now they've moved in her parents, and now we have an additional cat roaming our neighborhood, okay? Now, let me just say that there are different types of cats, okay? There are pets, there are strays, and there are feral cats. Okay, everybody knows what a pet is. It's some, a cat that, ever, that someone owns. A stray is a cat that at some point somebody owned or, or fed has had human contact. A feral cat is a wild cat that's never had um, human contact, okay? But the problem is, is if we have male cats in the neighborhood and they're allowed to roam, they can come in contact with other cats and then we have a cat population. Now cats can have three litters a year, okay? And a cat will have six, eight kittens at a time, okay? And each, each and every female cat or kitten that those cats have can actually have kittens by the time that mom has kittens again. Do you see that this could be an exponentially cat population, okay? Now, cats carry diseases, and I don't know if people understand this, but when they are left outside and they're not tended to, they can carry diseases that can hurt humans and animals, okay? So when I let my dog be a dog, and she's out playing in my yard, and their cat enters my yard, my dog could be at risk, okay? My dog could be at risk for rabies from their cat, my dog could be at, at risk for hookworm, toxoplasmosis, I mean, and it goes on. Feline HIV. Do we know what that is? It's, it's basically HIV for cats, but it can be transmitted to my dog. And if my dog were to get it, I would have to have her put down. Does anybody know the cost of a service dog? Let me say that when I checked into it, it was going to cost me $30,000. Okay, does anybody have a spare $30,000 laying around that they can spare for a service dog? Heck no, I don't either. So you know what I did? I trained my own service dog. With the help of my son, we trained my service dog. And she does everything I want her to do, okay? But it took us a long time to do that. She didn't become a service dog overnight. 
She didn't do everything I needed her to do overnight, okay? And I live alone. I've been widowed for over 11 years. My kids have left the nest now. They're, my son's graduating college next month from Ohio State at 20 years old. My daughter lives in Kentucky at 23 years old. I, they're not moving back home. So it's just Azora and I. We rely on each other. That's it. I can't have her telling me, Mom, somebody's in the yard when it's a cat. So what we need to do is we need to come up with a rule, a law, an ordinance, something for cats, OK? So I don't understand. And, and I, I want to explain a situation that happened in my neighborhood, OK? So I live on one side of these people. And on the other side lives Ju Judy and Rob, OK? Now, Judy and Rob have this amazing dog named Becca. And Becca is the most obedient dog I've ever seen, more obedient than mine, OK? Well, Becca and Rob were out playing Frisbee. And Rob accidentally overthrew the Frisbee two feet into my neighbor's yard. Becca went and got that Frisbee. My neighbor, when her husband got home, her husband went over to Rob, Rob and Judy's house. And Rob was at home, and he kept dropping the F-bomb to Judy. Keep your effing dog in your own yard. How, I mean, seriously? Because, and I said to my neighbor, I said, wait, why did that happen? He goes, well, my dog wanted to bolt the door when their dog came in my yard. Okay, but my dog wants to bolt the door every single time their cat comes on my property. So I think there's this double standard, okay? So I think dogs and cats should be treated equal. If my dog has to be on a leash, their cat should be on a leash. If my dog has to be contained in a fence yard, well, their cat should be contained, OK? I, I don't understand why their, dog, their cat doesn't have to be licensed like my dog. Samantha. Why doesn't their cat have to be rabies like my dog has to have rabies shots? First of all, thanks for coming tonight. I appreciate it. I agree with 100% with everything you just said. I, I have to come up there to hear you. Oh, OK. Yeah, come on up if you need to I, I agree with everything you just said. Um, I, I'm not a big animal lover, period, but I really despise cats as well. Um, I, don't know the, I don't know if you know much into this, Randy, as far as the laws and, and legal issues. No, I, I can tell you. I've looked into it. Have you looked at the new Carlisle city code? Well, okay, so my, my late husband was an assistant city manager, okay? okay? And he used to be the planning director in Tip City at one point, okay? okay. So I know a lot about city law and ordinances, okay? And there are no ordinances in the state of Ohio for cats. But did you so look? cats fall under what they call the raccoon law, it, correct? They're considered as a wild okay. animal. No. So raccoons, if a raccoon came on my property, here's the fallacy with that. If a raccoon came on my property, I could trap it and have it euthanized. It falls under a general right? Right. Animal tort. But you can't do it. Can't. But if a cat came on my property, especially one with a collar, I can't trap it or euthanize it. Right. So it can't be equal. It's not a raccoon. If it doesn't walk and talk like a raccoon, it's not a raccoon. So it can't fall under raccoon law. But it, but it does fall under the wild animal. And indigenous, it it indigenous, be a wild indigenous to well, that's just that's just what it falls on. Um, Randy, can I? Oh, yeah, I'm looking at Joe. Go, go ahead. Okay. Because um, we we went through this before with feral cats. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with, and it's the same thing. Yeah, I remember hearing. Do you remember that? Yeah, I wasn't on council, but I remember. You know, remember you're I'm sure you got feral cats. cats. Do you know if you have a feral cat with an illness, and that cat, and you went to grab that cat? and that cat scratched you, it could cause nerve damage, which is permanent for life. You know why I know that? Because I have a friend who has that. Well, we used to be able to trap feral cats, you know, and, and was it neuter them and then send them back, you know, basically, when that cost the city a hundred and some dollars per cat. And that's what it was costing the city. So we quit doing that. 
you know, but however, the cats do come under indigenous right. Right. animal I know we did. laws. We have, we have our own set of laws and ordinance that govern animals. And if you want to do your research, it's 618 under the new Carlisle Code. Um, 618 animals running at large. It blankly says horses, mules, cattle, sheep, goats, swine, dogs. It has to be not basically not running at large, not upon public ways. Um, and then it says, it goes on to say, no female dog or cat shall permit to go beyond the premise of the owner. Animal must be properly leashed. So, it, so you're no, saying their cat has to be leashed? What I'm saying is it says yes. female dog or cat, and it says heat. Anytime, hold on, can't, no ant, no owner, keeper, or harbor of, or harbor of any female dog or cat shall permit it to go beyond the premise of the owner, keeper, or harbor any time the animal is in heat. So that really in just heat. applies oh, to yeah, the female yeah, cat. So hold on, let me go down. I think it says that they no owner. Owner. That's, that's, that's why that's far too go, Randy. Yes, and then C is it goes on to say, no owner, keeper, or harbor of any dog or cat shall fell at any time to keep it either physically confined or restrained upon the premises of the owner, keeper, or harbor by lease. So we have our own set of ordinances. So now that you've came and I can get our code enforcement guy to look up, but I want to say She's been to our house. <laughs> sure, sure. Who have you called the owner of your actual apartment complex? If not, she no, don't their house. Is. Oh, 103 oh, North is a yeah, house. Yeah, Oh, you have the car, not the ant, not the... No. Correct. Got you. Now, is 105 North, is that renter owned or is it owner occupied? We already talked about that. That's too. the rental property. So it's actually a rental well, property. Well, it's rent their land contracting it. That means nothing. Okay. So it's rental occupied. Yes. Okay. So there's a very easy tool that I use for this. And that is I call the owner of the house and I say you will get violated. If the problem is not corrected, it is not your tenants that will have to pay for it. It actually goes to the owner of the house. So I will start this and I will see what I can do for you. Um, these things do take time. It's not something we have to oh, give them. We have to yes. give them time and, and stuff like that. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I've heard of this before. Um, I think of your issue, but I didn't know how. I didn't know the extent of it. To be yes. quite honest with you. I mean, there can't. I. I mean, I have a 1946 Willie CJ two way in my garage. If mm -hmm. I want to stop by and see it, but you know, it's always been titled in the family. It's. It's. You know, my son will inherit it. I don't need it to have cat scratches all over it. Sure. And every time a cat climbs on your vehicle, whether you realize it or not. It scratches that clear coat, which then it's going to be scratching the paint and everything else. There's no way for a to get on or off of your vehicle without scratching it. Okay. There's the people. Sorry, and thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Mr. Green. Appreciate that. Yeah. Mr. Cobb? Mike, we run into this problem, Mr. Arnold. We run into this problem with Kim. <coughs> Jones. Jones. Kim Jones. Jones. Kim Jones, city manager. We was fighting what she says it's not the city problem. You got to go to the county. We go back here and fight the county. The county says no. It's city problem. She didn't want to deal with it. I do remember that when she was city manager. We was fighting to try to get something, some kind of ordinance. To stop the cat from running free. Okay. I, I, I think that had more to do with, because I have to use the same avenue too. Like if we go and we give them a violation for not containing their cats, we don't have, on, we don't have any one staff to go secure that animal in a way, so we have to call the county. Unfortunately, when you call the county, no disrespect, about a cat issue, they don't, do they don't, they don't really care. do much because it's a cat. <clears throat> And cats are supposed to be able to be free and do all this stuff. I have two cats. They're indoor cats. I'm more of a dog person. I mean, I don't think it comes down to what type of animal you prefer. Um, if someone is not enjoying their property, it needs to be looked into. I don't think Kim didn't want to deal with it. I'm going to face the same battle that Kim dealt, trying to get someone at the county to come take care of it. You know, we have to still treat the animal humanely and legally. We can't just say, hey, street guy, go trap this cat and get it out of there, you know? And then we have the homeowner and the owner of the cat to take into consideration as well. So 
Um, we'll get the ball started and we'll see what we can get for you. And I, I really feel for you. Um, and I, I will try my best to help your situation out. Uh, just, just give us some time on this, okay? Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyone else in the audience? Questions, comments tonight before we move on? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Committee reports come tonight. Resolutions, none. And we'll drop down to ordinances. Mr. Collier, when you're ready, sir. Mr. Mayor, can we pause for a minute? Yes, please, go ahead. Samantha? She's, she's, she's got the information. Okay, she's got it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good. Thank you. Mr. Collier, when you're ready. Ordinance 17-36, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entity pools of Ohio for the administration of said policy. All right. No motion from council, die due to lack of motion. Yeah. Ordinance 17-40, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 11-2017, the next meeting. An ordinance amending the estimated resources of the city of New Carlisle to the county auditor that will be available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2017. <clears throat> Ordinance 17-41, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 11-2017, our next meeting. An ordinance reducing certain appropriations of the City of New Carlisle, Ordinance 17-11E. Ordinance 17-42E, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the City Manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entity pools of Ohio for the administration of said policy and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for Ordinance 17-42E. Second. second. I have a motion by Mr. Kraybach and a second by Mr. Lindsay. Yes, sir. It's an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, the city is required to have liability insurance on, um, on our property. And this quote is dealing with that. I am happy to mention that we have two representatives here from PEP. Um, actually, they're from USI. Uh, PEP is uh, who we get the insurance through. Um, to here to ask any questions that council may or may, may not have. Um, I will say I became city manager roughly three years ago. It has been an absolute pleasure to work with PEP and Ms. Shannon on behalf of PEP. Um, I could not speak more kind words about a company who has the city's best interest at all times. Um, I strongly encourage council to vote this ordinance in. Council, any questions, comments? And Mr. Bridge, this, is related, this, is, this ordinance is relating to the email you'd sent the other day also, correct? Yes, sir. You mind going over that? Um, well. Um, if you don't mind? No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Um, we are seeing a uh, we are see, seeing a decrease of sixteen thousand two hundred ten dollars from our twenty seventeen cost. That's, that's that's fantastic. That's great. Yeah, that is. To be um, I will say that we got the original quote from um, Pep, then we got a second quote from the Ohio plan, and I submitted that quote, and um, Pep wanted to keep us as a client, and that's why we are here today. Okay, great. Mr. Craybacher. Um, can I just ask a question? Can they explain the grant program? Because I was kind of interested in that. We took advantage of that last year. Did you? Yeah, we got some, I think, road signs, I think, done. So okay. um, I can give a short answer to it. It's just, I think, $500 up to $500. for safety equipment. Um, again, we took advantage of that last year. And one of them is bulletproof vests, I see. Yeah. Can you get the grant more than once? Just once a year. Once a year. Once a year. Okay. You, you will be eligible again after January 
Then they also talk about playground equipment. Can you, can you get that for playground equipment too? Mulch and things. Mulch mm -hmm. and stuff. Mulch. Mm -hmm. That's what I was asking. Yep. And one key thing I did fail to mention on this, I do apologize, is we have a three-year lock uh, rate guarantee on this, um, and that is depending on our loss ratio. ratio. Yes. So if that doesn't go up, we stay where we're at for the next three years. Can you explain a little bit about? Uh, there, it looks like that there was a rating pro, you know, rating, and we were the highest rated on, on the scale, like twenty or something. Am I right on this? I don't know anything about that. Uh, Wasn't there? No. <coughs> I think that was in the other policy. Yeah. What? I think that was in the other policy. Yeah. Oh, was that? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> but at least I read something. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a rate high. The <laughs> <laughs> percentage that, you're, that Mr. Kribach was talking about, it was, it was in the other policy, so we don't need to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kribacher. Council, any other comments or questions? Mr. Lindsay. I just want to tell uh, the city manager thank you for your negotiating skills. I would say thank you, and, Shannon, for her. And thank you to the insurance company for giving us a $16,000 reduction over last year. And this price will be locked in for three years, providing we stay uh, under what, a 40% or 60% ratio? 60% ratio. So if we don't have, if we only have a 59% uh, increase, it <laughs> stays the same, right? Great. Great. Yes. The rate, yes, yes. But I just wanted to, to say thank you for the uh, your negotiating skills, and again, thanks to the insurance company. Thank you, but I, it's 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 these two people right here who made the price happen. Thank you. I don't thank take you. compliments very well. Sorry, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this has always been like that. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Call for a vote, Mr. Mayor. Council, any other questions? <laughs> when you're ready, Mr. Collier. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Ordinance 1742E passes 7 to 0. It did require six yay votes. <laughs> Still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make Randy <laughs> Mr. Mayor, can we pause for a minute to let our guests get home? Please. Yes, please. Manner, please. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank, thank you so you much. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rob, I look forward to another great few years. Thank you. You guys have a long drive. And, and the, check will, the check will be in the mail. Watch out for the water, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I was being serious. All right. Are we done pausing? Yes, we're done pausing. All right. Continue, sir, when you're ready. Ordinance 17-43E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance amending Ordinance 16-18E regarding electric generation supply services for use within the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Mr. And declaring Mayor. an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Move to accept Ordinance 17 34 E. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. Um, the city of New Carlisle, we have an electric bill just like you have an electric bill. Um, about in 2015 or 16, I had signed us up with IGS Energy. We got a little bit of savings um, we, when we uh, went with IGS. Well, I noticed that electricity, their rates, kilowatt per hour rate was kind of low. Uh, so I contacted IGS and renegotiated our rates. So what we have in front of you now is a new term until 2021 with an anticipated savings to the city of $6,000. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Council, any questions, comments? Mr. Lethley. Uh, Mr. Bridge, thank you for your diligence in looking at that. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. No problem. As will most citizens of New Carolina. Well, thank you. <laughs> Council, any other questions? When you're ready, sir. Ms. Craybacher? Uh, yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. 
<coughs> Ordinance 1743E passes seven to zero. Thank you, sir. <coughs> but moving on to other business before we go down to the $23,000. The uh, informational things are under other business. I had a couple of uh, councilmen that said they wanted to make a couple of comments tonight, so I figured I figured probably most of us were going to with it being the night before the election. So I will just we can go down the line, I guess, here if you want. Mr. Lighty, if you would like, you can go first, sir. Um, with regards to issue four, you know, all the information is out there. I don't know there's a whole lot more we can do now for uh, right now, tomorrow morning. But uh, the thing that's kind of bothered me the most about issue four is uh, is painting local taxes in a bad light. You know, it's something that we need in order to run the city effectively. And uh, really, all issue four has done is just kind of create a problem. It hasn't really solved any major ta tax issues. You know, the real problem is we are being taxed where we work. And if you're like me, you're getting taxed in three different places. So I hope not just in New Carlisle, but as a state, at some point in our lives, we can come together and we can fight the state in order to get this turned around. So we're not being taxed where we're working and being taxed so we can pay money into where we live, where it affects us directly. And I think I mean, we all know what's, what's gonna happen if, if this were to pass. And it's, uh, to be honest, it's, I'm, I'm worried about it. When you know we have the the chief of the fire department, every police officer is saying, "Yeah, yeah, this is this is not good." Then uh, I hope everyone out there is listening to that. That's what I can say. Hey, Mr. Lighty, Mr. Lundy, did you have I can only really concur with Mr. Lighty on issue four. Uh, I said it before. I'll say it again. If this issue passes, the city's going to be devastated. Uh, I spoke with Representative Kyle Taylor last night for the second time on this issue, trying to push him or pressure him into doing something at state level to get something done so it affects the entire state to where your city income tax goes to the city you work in or uh, live in, not where you work. He promised me last night that he would contact his aides and get them started on it. Uh, I hope he can do something. It won't happen this year, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully in another couple of years we can get something done. I don't know, but something's got to be done at the state level. But on issue four, again, if it passes, this city is devastated. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Lindsay, I know it's going to be preaching to the choir, especially all of us up here, but vote no. Exactly. Because the potential loss of what we'll have is absolutely astronomical. Sorry, there's flies in here. Uh, I think that everyone up here is united in this one effort to fail issue four. I encourage everyone to vote. Um, the big thing is, is, turn, is turnout. And if you know people, call them. If you take them to the polls, drive them to the polls. We're going to need a maximum amount of people out there to fail this thing. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I was going to tag on this a little bit, but I figured I'd wait till this part. You know, a couple of the councilmen thanked you for all your hard work, Randy. The, uh, the you know the six thousand dollars in the electric bill, uh, the insurance. Uh, you know, you shaved money off the police contract a year or so ago. The bond refinancing. You know, some of these comments out there just blow my mind. It's you know they say that the city is is you know is just you know, you can't, you know whether they're talking about individual council members or us as a whole or the city manager. I saw a comment that said. You know, why, why should we trust our city manager? He doesn't even live in the city of New Carlisle. I've seen, <laughs> and I'm just like, are you, I mean, really, do some, do some of the people think about these comments they say? I mean, I've seen him do more than I've seen, you know, I've seen in a long time. And, and with this council supporting the majority of the things that he comes up with that saves, our, saves the money for the citizens. You know, uh, the pool, the, the restructure of the, of the bond finances, you know, all these things, the, the communications contracts he got shaved down, I think, 18,000, 17, right around there. I mean, these are big numbers that are popping up as savings to our city. Uh, and and it's still, it's, there's this bad reputation that the city's still out to get people. Uh, it, it's, it's just mind boggling to me. I, I think that, you know, we don't always agree. We don't always necessarily get along, but I think we've definitely, you know, as a group have moved the city forward in ways that it hasn't seen in a long time. And we've seen streets repaved this year and number records, uh, six streets, um, you know, downtown, you know, looks pretty good with, you know, the lighting that was done years ago. 
uh, all the groups, agenda, uh, the, the things that we have, the, the festival, the churches, you name it. I mean, we've got a lot of positive things in this city. And uh, this is just really going to hit the emergency brake and uh, throw it in reverse, I think. So um, I just, you know, I want Randy, I want to thank you and, and everyone on your staff for all the hard work you've done. I would like to thank council for allowing us to do our job and trusting the administration. We're the ones who get up every day and come to work to make sure the streets are plowed and, you know, make sure your street lights are on and, yep. you know, um, but it's been definitely been a group effort. Um, but I will say that we have been blessed with a council that allows us to do our job and doesn't micromanage and takes advice of the administration. Um, and sometimes you don't get that in municipalities. Um, but I think this administration has, quite frankly, we, we proved ourselves. Uh, it's, it's not to bring it up, but it's, you know, people have questions about me not living in New Carlisle. Lots of cities don't require any kind of residency. It's in our charter. Um, and if they don't think that I should trust, be trusted, um, it's very easy to go behind the keys of Facebook and say a bunch of stuff that's not factual. If I'm not factual, if I'm not honest, I go to jail. Right. It's that simple. So you should have every reason to believe or not, or trust me. I mean, I, I, I just want people to realize I have a passion for this. I didn't go to grad school because I just liked it, you know. <laughs> um, but thanks. I mean, it goes both ways. You guys have allowed us to spread our wings, per se, and, and do this stuff. So it goes right back to the council, too. So we appreciate you. So thank you very much, mm -hmm. Mr. Kraybach. Well, there's a lot of positive things happening in New Carlisle. <clears throat> you know. Absolutely. And you know, you did, you have, you know, I'm glad you look at the paperwork and said, hey, this is not right. For instance, the health insurance thing, you know, and that's not right. And we could do that better. Or let me go and talk to them and negotiate. You know, thanks a lot, Randy. You know, that's what the manager is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You're doing a really good job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of positive, you know, we heard about the garden today. You know, um, there's also some other things happening. There's a, supposed to be a second farmer's market next, start next year. You might not know that. You know, it's talking about being at, at the Church of the Brethren parking lot on Thursdays. You know, so I have to get that through the Church of the Brethren leadership. And that shouldn't be no problem. Um, Jim, okay, Jim and I were talking about something today because I heard about this. The senior citizens uh, place down on Brewbaker is doing some remodeling. It's sure so investing some big money into the, to that area to make it nicer for the senior citizens. I'm always for that. You know, that's, you know, two things. You know, so there are positive things. But issue four, you know, um, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. A lot of our, you know, the money that we that we generate for our, our income tax goes into the general fund in order to help even the enterprise funds. In other words, they can borrow out of that. And I don't think we charge interest if they borrow. And that's a good It's thing. a good deal. That's a good thing. <coughs> so we need that money. We need, <laughs> you don't think, well, we're not a bank either. Right. So, so, you know, we need that money. We need, we need the income tax. We don't have an industrial base, and I said it before, is that when I first came on to council <coughs> years ago, whatever it was, 14 years ago, you know, one of my things was I wanted to change the tax structure to bring in a more of an industrial based tax structure, but then I saw we couldn't do that. You know, and still, you know, we're probably not to where we need to be as far as the industry, you know. Yes, I agree. It's not fair to, to pay tax where you work and where you live. I agree with you 100%. I almost agree with maybe there should be, you know, pay, maybe where you work, maybe you are paid $50 and not the full amount. But we can't change that. You know, this is where you live. This is where you play. This is where you go to church. And many people eat here. You know, and visit their friends, yell at their neighbors about cats. This is where you do it, not where you work. Look at where you, where you live. We want a good place to live. 
I want to be able to look out my neighbors, you know, and wave to them, and they wave back. This is where we want to be. That's it. I'm done. Thank you, sir. I'm Appreciate done preaching. It. All right, Mr. Leffler. I don't want to duplicate everything, but I echo everything that's been said. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can say uh, than what we've said. Uh, I, I am saddened by the comments that I see on Facebook, the uneducated comments that people make. Uh, I wish that people would come to meetings and get the truth. The fact that people think that we are lying, the fact that people think that we are scaring them is ludicrous. It's the truth. And uh, if you if you don't believe it, hopefully it doesn't pass. But uh, I don't think there's a person up here that wants to lie to anybody about what's going to happen. That, that what, we have nothing to gain from that. So it's just sad that we live in a society where there's so much distrust. And uh, this anti-social media is just a big part of that. And it's, it's sad. Thank you, Mr. Leffler. Mr. Lowry? Wow. I've got fall on six of you. But basically, uh, same thing. Vote no on issue four. It's not going to work. And as Jim just said, you look on Facebook and some of the things that are said are totally illegal. Um, gentleman quoted the other day, don't worry about it. Stay highway patrol and the sheriff will take care of your crime. <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, been through it before. Not going to happen. Um, another thing is you always hear, well, New Carlisle will not allow business to come in to bring tax dollars. Well, you know what? We're surrounded by nurseries and cornfields. We don't own property to sell. We can't sell property to Ajax Spark Plug Company if they want to come here. We can help negotiate to the people who own the cornfield or whatnot to try to get them to do that. But we do not own property. Uh, when Trosos was tore down, it was all over the place. Shame on New Carlisle for allowing them to tear down that building. Guess what? It was their building. It's allowed to do with it whatever they want to do. They could leave a stand as long as it met the curve, or they could sell it or keep it. We can't do that. We can't go out here and make these people sell property, bring business in here. It just don't work that way. Um, the other thing is I, they bang on Randy all the time, city manager. He spends money freely with no rain. And I've heard that from one of the people running for council. I ain't ashamed to say it. They're going to call him Randy now. All you got to do is look at the savings that he has done. That's just trying to get elected in a crooked way. Okay? Do not vote no on issue four, please. New Carlisle will cease to exist the way you know it. Is. Do you want absolutely to cease to exist. You want to, you want to reword that? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> It will cease to exist, as you know. It will not be a free site. That's it. Also, before we go on, Mr. Carter, I'll let you finish up. I just wanted to. Uh, I have something under new business, Mike, when we get to that, too. Okay. This was something different. Well, if you want to go ahead, then go ahead. Yeah, if you don't mind. No, go ahead. Okay. Mr. Bridge. Yes, sir. I had someone contact me, and I've looked at it and seen it, and. Uh, contact me about it and I think they're absolutely right and it's time for the city to get into it and do something about it. That is the empty building on the east side of the street, uh, Speedway. Mm -hmm. They've made a lot of money in this city. They've got an empty building sitting there which in my opinion and the other person's opinion that brought it to me borders on blight. Uh, they've got dead signs sticking up in the air, posts. I would like to see them be invited to a council meeting, someone high up, to let us know what they're going to do with the building. I know they don't want to sell it to someone that can turn around and make it a filling station, and I completely understand that. Uh, why can't they donate it to the city? Tear it down and donate it. It'd be a nice place for people walking around town to walk in there, <laughs> sit down, anything other than what it is now. Start a garden. Actually, uh, they have no idea to do start anything with it. Start a garden. And well, I think we need to jump on it and jump on it quick. <laughs> you got to pick yourself at Speedway shoes, and I'm all for it, but they're not going to donate it. And even if they want to donate it, a park is asking. not. That's one of your. You want business in here. That's a signalized corner that has probably the second or third highest traffic counts we have. So you're probably going to reserve that space for some sort of business, whether it be a fast food restaurant uh, or whatever. 
I, you know? I can tell you that every Thursday evening mm -hmm. I play card. I play euchre. Mm -hmm. I play with. There are two people there who are pretty high up in speedway. Mm -hmm. I have asked them several times, mm -hmm. and nowhere in the future is that building going to be sold. It will not be. They have made this statement to me, Rick. I can tell you in advance, there are no plans to sell that building. And if they would they donate, they can't to sell it and mm -hmm. say you're never allowed to put a service station in here. Well, I know that they would donate. One minute. To, one minute they, they would donate to the city. The city, how we have to demo it, we have to remove all the debris, we have to level the place. So well, we got to do something. A, okay. I understand, and, and I agree with and, you. I'm tired of looking at it, everybody else started looking mm -hmm. at it, and I think it's wrong that they don't care anything about the city other than just let it sit there as is. I think that's totally wrong. And I think we need to move in the right direction. So, and can you? Out. I don't know anybody really high up enough to make that decision. So, well, can we reach out to them and have them attend the building and, or have them attend the meeting and answer some questions and whatnot? Like, Sure. Okay, and I think Linda has something she wants to say. I, I I'm not allowed to let you speak with he is. I've been talking to Speedway about that building for two years. Mm -hmm. When I first approached them, I just went over to Enid, walked in, I talked to the head of commercial real estate for them, and I proposed that they donate that property to the community garden so that we could open a food co-op and a building where we could have classes and maybe have a small commercial kitchen. And they said, wow. The next day, I got a call from the head of commercial real estate for Marathon. And they said, I wanted to introduce myself. We are going to be talking a lot. Have you heard from them since? Didn't hear from them. Didn't hear from them. I called, and they said, "Oh, we've turned that into a maintenance training facility." It is. So it is. It is a use for them. Yeah, they don't want to sell. They don't want to donate it either. Well, I've they can't sell. It's well, not, it is I don't know that. No, it's not. No. Randy, they can't sell it with the stipulation that no, that they can't sell it with the stipulation. For instance, if I buy, it. they mm -hmm. can't. Put a stupid place on that I could never open a service station. And that's why it's not for sure. We had, we had talked about if okay. we could get that, we could hold the farmer's market there. Mm. And it would be, you know, yeah. high visibility. It would be so that it wasn't congesting up on spread It'd be a real market as opposed to mm. long stretches of whatever. Mm. And they were, they were, Excited. I mean, this guy called me a couple of times. And yeah, this is a good idea. But then the liability of it. And there was a liability, wasn't there? That's why we never did the farmer's market there. No, they wanted they, the WW, whatever. Western Park County. Yeah, Western Park County. They just wanted it down where it's at now okay. in order to promote businesses on the street. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Lowry? No, just the flag retirement ceremony on Saturday, November 11th, that has been changed. It says dusk. It will start at 4 o'clock because they have a something soon after, so they're on a time constraint. You mean the flag retirement ceremony? Flag retirement ceremony. Right. Correct. Not flag burning. Oh, that's it was, well, I did that. Mr. Carl, you want to read through the last yes. bit, sir? Yes. You said 4 p.m., Mr. Lowry? 4. What date? Uh, the 11th, November 11th. Saturday. Under other business, Congressman Warren Davison will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. The Crime Watch meeting is this Wednesday, November the 8th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. City offices will be closed on Friday, November the 10th to observe Veterans Day. And the flag retirement ceremony will be Saturday, November the 11th, at starting at 4 p.m. loaded at the American Legion Hall. Thank you, sir. Also, before we wrap up, I just want to wish on top of voting now on issue four. I just wish the uh, candidates running for council best of luck tomorrow, Mr. Lighting, Mr. Cobb, Mr. Shannon. Best of luck to you, John. And with that being said, Mr. Sir.